Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm your host Mark Fusco here for the special New Year's Eve edition of the show for 2012, going into 2013. Um, so I've got uh, three bubblies, three sparklers here for you to try out. Uh, now the first one we're going to do is also from the Biltmore State. So if you watch the uh, Christmas special um, from last week, you'll know that I got some wine from the Biltmore. And uh, so I got this one also in connection with trying to do a Skype interview with him. Uh, and I had thought about saving this, but at the same time, I really wanted to, you know, use it as a sparkling wine uh, because it is, I wouldn't say value price, but it's, it's going to be the, the most value price of the three sparklers we're doing today. So this is the uh, uh, non-vintage, by the way, all these are non-vintage, all right? It's, I don't roll that deep. Uh, this is the non-vintage Biltmore Estate Blanc de Blancs Brut Sparkling Wine, Okay. And I'll have a, a better, that's not too bad, have a better picture of the bottle uh, in a little bit. Uh, now this is, oh, actually, it says vintage 2008. Does it have the vintage on there? Interesting. I didn't see that. I didn't see the vintage on the bottle. So therefore, I made an assumption that it was non-vintage, but I don't see anywhere on the bottle that says 2008. This is the spec sheet they sent me. So, we'll say that the grapes were picked in 2008, okay? Um, anyway, uh, blah, blah, blah. I won't go through the, yeah, why not? We'll, we'll go through the marketing, the marketing fluff they got on there. The award-winning Biltmore Sparkling Wines are part of a grand legacy, and they embody the gracious hospitality of George ben Vanderbilt's estate. Again, like last week, if you didn't know that that's where the Biltmore name comes from. Well regarded for their exceptional quality, the grapes for our sparkling wines are harvested with, high, with a high acidity and fermented in stainless steel at cool temperatures. The wines then undergo a second fermentation, second fermentation in the bottle. So that's known as the champagne method, um, which is, you know, the champagne guys um, perfected. Let's put it that way. Um, which creates a crispy wine with tiny bubbles. Uh, the wine is then aged for at least a year before disgorging. All right, so it says vintage 2008. So they don't see it on the bottle, but we'll go with that. Grapes, it's 100% Chardonnay. So um, it's, it's Blanc de Blanc. That's what Blanc de Blanc means. Uh, there's three grapes that are used in traditional champagne. You can make a sparkling wine from any grape, okay? But for the grapes used in champagne, you have Chardonnay, Pinot Noir, and Pinot Meunier. Pinot Noir and Pinot Meunier are noir, they're black grapes, okay? So um, Chardonnay is a Blanc de Blanc. Uh, they did 1,200 cases, the pH, again, for the uh, geeks out there, 3.08. Uh, total city is uh, 0 0.91, um, right, TA? See, I don't ever get to the really geeky stuff. So I may have been wrong last time. So anyway, how to measure a city. Oh, it's not total. See, I'm glad I, I kind of looked this up. It's titratable acidity. How interesting. Because I had never really paid attention to, uh, to this. So tit titratable acidity. So for all you people that watched the Christmas episode and were all mad that I said total acidity, I was wrong, corrected myself. Granted, I only recorded it you know, half hour ago. Uh, residual sugar, 1.0%, so it's it's fairly dry, uh, as in brute. Uh, alcohol, 12.5%. Now they, um, the second fermentation happened in the bottle for 24 to 30 months, and um, it is a suggested retail of 24.99. 
So um, you can buy this off the website. Now I did talk about how I couldn't find it the Christmas wine on their website, but you can buy this off the website. They have another sparkling wine. I don't remember what it's called. Um, and yes, I am intentionally pouring it into the regular glass because when I'm evaluating wines, I want to be able to really swirl it. I mean, these are great and all, and I like them and you know, whatever, they, they focus stuff. But I really like drinking or, or evaluating wines out of this. Now, a little bit later, I'm gonna be drinking the sparklers after all this, so I'll be drinking out of the champagne flute. But for, the, for this, we're gonna do this. And you notice I don't have a spit bucket either. <laughs> Woo! Like the effervescence is like really getting into the nose there. I feel like I could get like apples out of this. And I don't know if that was part of their, yeah, it was. And pear, I, was, apples and pears. I didn't really read the tasting notes ahead of time. I, tried, I skipped over them. But that's what I get a preponderance of is apples and pears. And, and really I kind of get that a kind of a lime mass, you know, lime part because it's, I don't know, there's a, there's a, there's a, you know, a nice little tartness to it, to the, uh, to the, um, to the bouquet that's not like a lemon type of tartness, more of a lime. But it feels like it's bubbling in my, in my nose. Now it's starting to kind of, it's starting to kind of diminish a little bit. Maybe if I really just kind of swirl it a little bit. But yeah, I mean, very apple-y pear and lime for me. Let's see how it tastes. It's really smooth, um, which I don't, I don't really use that term, I think, with white wines a whole lot. But it's got some really good acidity. Um, it's definitely dry. It's not a lot of residual sugar. It shouldn't be. It's a brute wine. Um, Americans tend to like drier champagnes rather than sweeter champagnes, so we're not going to get into, we're not going to get dew. We're not going to get even um, demi-sec and sec, so well, you might get some sec. But, um, uh, we're going to get really that brute and extra brute, that type of stuff more than anything else. That's what our palates seem to prefer with champagnes. Um, but a good amount of acid to it. Um, I get more of the, I get more of the lime and lemon flavors off of it rather than the apples and the pears on the palate. You can really feel the bubbles uh, all over your tongue, even though you don't really see them there. I mean, the, the carbonation is still there. Um, and it really is very lemon lime. I'm not gonna say Sprite, because that would, that would, that would sit there and make you think I'm, it's sweet like a cola, but almost like, a, almost like a tonic and lime type of thing. So um, not like club soda, but like, you know, having that tonic part, so there's a bit of a stringency to it, not like a quinine type of thing, because that's what tonic is. Um, but you get that, but you get that lime in there, so it's 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 a you know a refreshing type of drink. Um, it's really nice. Twenty four ninety nine. You might be able to get it cheaper at retail. Um, definitely, you can get it from the website. I mean, this would be something, you know, again, for, it doesn't have to be New Year's Eve, by the way. I mean, we, we tend to do these New Year's Eve write, write ups and specials because with, with sparkling wine, because that's what traditionally we do with sparkling wine is we, we reserve it for special occasions. But let me tell you, man, you want something to start off your meal, sparkling wine is a great way to go. All right. Especially you pair it with some salads, pair it, uh, pair it with some cheeses, that type of thing. Um, it's a great, it's a great way to kind of get the palate, get the juices going on your palate. I mean, the acidity is really good. Um, I mean, I don't know what 0.91 on tartaric acidity really means as far as high, low, medium, uh, and acidity, but it's got some good, really good acidity. My mouth is watering a lot. Uh, makes me want to eat something. 
Um, makes me want to pair it with a salad. I, I typically will like do spinach salads with, with, with sparkling wines, but this really feel more like a regular, like a regular like, quote house salad, iceberg lettuce and balsamic vinaigrette, rather than getting like a, like a spinach salad with like, well, with blue cheese and pecans. And I, I think I'd rather go a traditional salad uh, roll with this. Um, I wouldn't, I'm not, I mean, ranch and blue cheese dressing and honey mustard, they're all great, but you know, give, give me oil and vinegar, uh, balsamic vinaigrette or any type of vinaigrette or just like traditional Italian dressing. I'm set. I love all that type of stuff. And you totally could pair this with that. We also get some good cheeses with this. Um, I even get like, like if you want to do like cheeses and nuts, that type of stuff, a great little appetizer wine. Get the juices flowing, whether it's New Year's Eve or it's July 30th. It doesn't matter uh, when it is. Now, all these wines have been chilled. Um, they're not ice cold, but they were in the refrigerator for a few hours, and I pulled them out when I got pre prepared for the, for the show. And then I put them back in while I was recording the other show just to get them chilled a little bit more again because I felt like they were warming up a little too much. You know, really that, that pear and that apple. And almost like a caramel. Very tasty, very, 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 very tasty. Um, definitely recommend it. Yeah, really the caramel now starting to come through on that. Um, caramel apple type of thing. Makes me think of Halloween. Did you watch that episode? You should. Um, yeah, I mean, it's really starting to, I think, develop a little more. I'm going to pour just a little more. As I thought about coming back to it because I was getting this stuff, but I want to try it now. Maybe it's not just caramel, but I am getting the apple and the lime. Um, really think this would go great with some food. Highly recommend. This is, a, this is a recommend. I would say go out and buy it. Absolutely. And, you know, last show I talked about like not scoring anything anymore. I was also thinking about the fact that how Siskel and Ebert made you know, change the, the, the movie, movie viewing public's perception of movies by just saying if it was a thumbs up or a thumbs down. I mean, really, they didn't even go into more than just that. It was either yes or no. It was very binary, actually. Um, very geeky of them. Um, so, I mean, that's one thing to think about with the whole rating system. So, anyway, highly recommend it. Um, Real quick before we move on to the next wine again, like it's last show. This book here. I haven't read too much more since the last show because, well, hopefully I read, but since I recorded it, since I did it the same day. Uh, I'll drink to that Beaujolais and the French peasant who made the mo world's most popular wine by Rudolf uh, Chelminski. Uh, like I said, the stories are wonderful in here. I haven't gotten too far into it, but stories are great. you got to read this thing about Beaujolais. So, um, highly recommend it. All right, so um, let's move on to the next wine. Yes, I remember to do a little break in between. And uh, we're gonna go to Champagne for the next one, actually the next two, but we're gonna go to Champagne. All right, we're back with the second wine. Also, a little light changing, the lights are starting to dim because they've been on for a little while. And uh, so the exposure should be a little bit good. It feels like it's a little overexposed, but we'll see how that is. Uh, once I get into editing. But anyway, um, so we're on to the second wine. So we're all going to Champagne. Now this wine, it's it's the middle of ours. Actually, no, it's actually the second in price considering uh, the, the discount I did get. But uh, this is the uh, Jacquard Champagne. It, they're called their Brut Mosaic uh, from Reims. Or Reims, whoa, Reims, Reims, right? France, uh, in the Champagne region. 
Um, this sells at, I got, also got this at Joe Saglin Benny's here in San Antonio. Uh, sells for $54.99 normally, but they had it on sale and I paid $29.97 on it. So just a few dollars more than the Biltmore. And uh, now this is a blend of all three of the grapes that they're used in Champagne. Um, they use uh, Chardonnay, which is 35 to 40 percent. Um, they use Pinot Noir, which is the other another 35 to 40 percent. And then um, so that adds, sorry, Chardonnay is a dominant grape variety. Okay, giving brute mosaic its freshness and delicate aromas. Pinot Noir, 35 to 40 percent, adds structure. And Pinot Meunier, uh, which is 25 to 30 percent, brings fruit and roundness. Okay, so. Um, Grapes are sourced from exceptional terroirs, including the Grand Cru of the Côte de Blanc and the Montague de Reims. Presence of 20% minimum reserve wine ensures regularity of style, while more than three years of aging and a light dosage of 10 grams per liter result in a balanced and complex champagne. So, um, I'm not sure how long these guys have been around because I didn't really get too much more than just the um, just the stuff about, uh, oh, here we go. Style, vision. See, they got a fancy website. So as far as menus are concerned, let's take a look. It made a really good golden color on it, okay? I mean, if you didn't know there was sparkling in it, you'd think it was like, you know, like a, almost like a New World Chardonnay out of it. Uh, so they started in 64, uh, so Jacquard has worked to become one of the world's leading champagne brands, and um, the aim of these visionary wine growers is to offer champagne lovers a brand that is born in the vineyard, not the boardroom. So it looks like it's a co-op. Uh, three growers cooperatives came together in 98 to form the Alliance Champagne Group and create the Champagne Jacquard brand name. Um, so yes, it is a co-op. Now, I didn't see any of the little um, codes or two, two letter abbreviations on the wine to kind of tell you what, what is what, so on both of the wines, so I can't really tell you too much other than that. All right, classic champagne. You get that pastry bakery uh, nose. That kind of sweetness, almost like a sour, sourdough type of uh, aroma to it. Even get kind of almond out of it. And, and I had some almond sparkling when I was over at Miss, um, well, you haven't seen the episode yet, but when I went to Messina Hof uh, tasting room, um, they had an almond champagne, almond flavor champagne, or not champagne, sparkling wine. Really good. I'm very surprised by these flavored sparkling wines and the almond ones in particular because you know nuts are great and all but you know it's just I just never thought that an almond flavored sparkling wine would ever taste good and and every one I've had has been good but that one that Messina Hoff was exceptional. And you can really get the effervescence into your into your nose. You know it feels like you're taking an extra gas, you know extra air into you. Well, there is a nuttiness to it in a sourdough bread type of thing. And that continues on to the palate. It really has got a nutty flavor to it. Um, it's, it's got that, it's got a, the, the sourdough is not as prominent anymore, but it's got a bit of a, you know, it's, um, it's brute. Yeah, well, it's brute, and the mosaic is the, the combination of, a, it says the combination of all the grapes is the mosaic, but it's brute, so it's not got a lot of sweetness to it. It's very low residual sugar, um, but you've got that bit of nuttiness to it, um, a little bit of the pastry, but I don't really get a lot of other fruits, or I don't get really fruit flavor to it. I mean, maybe like an apricot.
And I think this is where people are going with the almond flavored sparkling wines because maybe the American ones don't get that almond flavor to it naturally, but you're getting it from this. Um, it's tasty. It's really good. I mean, exceptionally good. Like if you see it on the shelf and you're looking for something to bring to a party or take home and just really enjoy or bring to a party and impress people, you're, you're, you're going to have people compliment you on this champagne. Um, and real quick, champagne is champagne. This is not champagne. It's sparkling wine. And it's good sparkling wine. Nothing wrong with it. But it can't be called champagne because it doesn't come from champagne. Okay? It's like you don't call a Cuban cigar a cigar that comes from, I don't know, the Dominican Republic. Maybe some of the Cuban cigar growers, you know, places went to the Dominican Republic because they did. But they can't call them Cuban cigars anymore because the tobacco is not grown in Cuba. Okay? Just like you can't call an orange from Texas a Florida orange, right? Speaking of that, I had an apple, I had an apple ice, ice cider. I had ice cider the other day. Pretty good. This is a definite recommend. I really would say that you should, you should check it out. Like I said, if you're trying to find something last minute, because you're probably seeing this on New Year's Eve or maybe a couple days before, I'm trying to get this up like the Friday before New Year's, so there's a couple extra days in there. But um, if you're looking for something and you're, you're hitting your finer wine shops, because you're probably not going to find this at your grocery store, you're probably not going to find it um, um, at, at your smaller chain areas. I mean, you'll find it at... You know, I mean, I might be able to find this at like Specs and Gabriel's, but I did get it at Joe Sacco and Benny's. You're gonna probably find it at your better wine air, wine shops. You're not gonna find it at your major grocery stores that have decent wine selections. Um, you know, you may, you may, you might, but um, I would definitely uh, recommend buying it. I'm really impressed with the almond flavor or the nuttiness out of it, and it's you know good acidity. Um, very dry. Excellent, excellent. Now, I talked about food pairing with the last one. And, uh, you know, this one, I honestly would just drink on its own. I think it's because of the nuttiness out of it. Um, I mean, you totally could pair this with some cheeses, some maybe some fruits, um, nuts. So if you had like a selection of like almonds and, and pecans and walnuts and pistachios. I love pistachios, by the way. Um, that type of stuff. I could see that um, with maybe some like, um, well, we had this like chutney thing during Thanksgiving. We'll probably have it again. We'll probably had it during Christmas. Um, but I could see like having that with some crackers and, and uh, some cheese and having that on there and then uh, having some nuts with it. So totally could do that. Yeah, this is good. See, I, I didn't put the spit bucket here because I probably would dump the rest, but I'm going to drink the rest of this. This is really good. Definitely recommend it. Like I said, if you got some coin to spend, you want to impress the ladies, want to impress the guys, want to impress the boss, highly recommend it. All right, so let's move on to the next wine. Uh, and I'm excited about trying this one also. All right, we're back for the final wine for New Year's Eve. Um, got another sparkler, another champagne. And uh, again, this was another recommendation from Joe Sack and Benny's. Um, these, the guy that was helping me out, super helpful, because I really went to him and said, this is what I want, and he got me what I wanted. So props to them. Uh, hope you guys are watching this. Um, I don't visit you guys enough as it is. Um, I need to show up a lot more often, and I don't, but it's just a function of... Um, you're not super far, but you know, it is a drive to get out there, but they got a great selection of stuff. And I, I always sit there and, and kill myself or beat myself up for not heading over there as much as I should. So, um, it's, it's, it's a cool place to go and everybody there's so helpful and nice. And they got tastings on Tuesdays and Saturdays and all that. So, um, if you're in San Antonio, they are definitely one of 
one of a couple places you should visit. Now, not to take away any thunder from Joe's, but... I do want to give a plug to Ceci's Wine Shop, Venusy Speaking. Venusy Speaking. I always say Venusly. Venusy Speaking. It's in the medical center, a little bit farther away from me, but Ceci does live right, just right up the road from me. So um, if I ever need anything, she can, I can always uh, do that if I need to. But um, we want some, some cool eclectic stuff and, and definitely good price stuff. Check out Venusy Speaking also. So plug for Ceci. Um, and I'm totally excited that she, her, her shop's been open. Not under that name, but she's had the shop for a year now, and she's going strong with it. I mean, she's got some great events that she does on Saturdays. Um, I just can never go to them. I'm so jealous. I mean, the, she does, and what, what she does, she does a lot of food pairing. So um, I've gone to a few of them, and they've been phenomenal. And uh, everybody there, all the regulars are so cool. I even, and the Joe's regulars are cool. A lot of them are the same regulars, by the way. Um, but... Um, you know, I, I've gotten to know some of these regulars, especially with Ceci, uh, and they're some great people. So anyway, that's what wine's about, right? Sharing it with some awesome people. All right, so I poured the wine. I didn't even talk about it. So this is the Andre uh, Cluet uh, Champagne. This is a Brut Nature Silver. I don't have too much else about this. I think this might be... It just says Grand Cru 100% Boozy, uh, which is the area... Uh, so, Champagne, they, they, they rate the vineyards, or the, not the vineyards, like, like, like Burgundy necessarily. I mean, they do, but they rate the areas, and some areas are Grand Cru, which that means it scores 100%. Uh, and then you, have, then you have a little bit farther down. So, this is definitely one of the top, this is going to be a top-rated grape. It's like getting, it's like getting wine from a, from a, uh, a top-rated Burgundy vineyard. Okay, or or a climat. All right. Anyway, um, so so in the boozy area now. Um, the last one was from Reims, and Reims is, you know, not north north, but kind of the northern, the southern part of the northern part of Champagne. Uh, this is kind of a little bit farther south. Um, let me get my little map open real quick. Um, so I'm, I'm gonna guess that it's. About, let's see, 10, they're probably about 10, maybe 20 miles from each other, okay? Uh, but Reims is kind of the northern part of, of uh, the area. And then um, this is in the, what's called the Marne area of uh, the Champagne region. Uh, so it's somewhat in the center. The, the area that it surrounds is called I, which is near Epernay. So, um, just to give you an idea where it is. If I remember, I'll hopefully have the map up and I'll, I can highlight that. Uh, I bought this. Well, it's regularly priced $50.99. I bought it for $38.24 after my discount. Not my discount, but they were having a discount at Joe's. So I bought it for that. And um, I, like I said, I don't know. I don't know if it doesn't say on here that I can tell if it's a Blanc de Blanc or Blanc de Noir or if it's all three. And... The write-up from Pioneer doesn't say much. Um, let's see. Let's see if I can get the Brut Nature Silver so you can pull that up real quick. Yes, maybe. Ah, it is 100% Pinot Noir. See, I knew I should have clicked on that link. Um, so let's read this real quick. Um, the the non-vintage, by the way, Brut Nature Silver is a focused linear offering with less overt generosity and creaminess than Brut Grand Reserve. Um, we won't go into the rest because I don't want to read it because it might give me some predisposition of what I'm going to taste and smell. All right, so less sourdough, but still got the bakery part. Um, and it's really more like, really more like croissant, you know, the croissant type of thing, really more that pastry You know, with, with, with a little bit of like fizz. I mean, granted, I'm getting the fizz again. You know, the, the carbonation, the effervescence is coming through in the nose. And it really seems to have, to have stayed in the glass because I talked a long time and it still seemed like the bubbles were in there. You know, granted, I'm using a large glass. These glasses are not good for showing off the bubbles. And that's really why they use these. Okay, and then you, then you etch them inside to really accentuate 
the bubbles. I mean, these are not meant to showcase the bubbles, okay? That's why people get all upset when you use these large glasses. I really like this nose. Okay, I like it the best of all three. I mean, this was cool with the sourdough and all that. Um, and this was great with the pears and apples. I mean, this is order of nose, one, two, three. Um, but I, this team, this really feels more of a truly classic champagne nose. I could smell this, like I could smell this, not for hours, but I could, I could just smell this for a while. So let's move on because I, I, I I don't want to take any more time. This is good. This was not that this was bad. This was really good and this is really good. But this feels like it's a another level up i mean and it's in the same ballpark price wise as this as this one okay um for retail price granted i did pay more for this one than, than that one um but it's like five bucks less retail at least at joe's retail but this is good i mean you get still that pastry um i didn't get the almond stuff now i mean that was the kind of cool thing about this one I had the almond I get a little bit of nuttiness. It's not as pronounced as the jacquard. The jacquard. The jack court. <laughs> as I'm like typing it, it's like, how do I spell it? Jack court. Uh, the jacquard. Um, it's not as nutty as that one, but I get more of that, more of that buttery um, pastry and nuttiness out of it. Now let's, really, wow. Here the fruit shows brighter. Okay, they didn't say that it shows fruit, just brighter. Higher toned notes, along with flowers, minerals, and mint that linger on the powerful clothes. As delicious as the Brut Nature Silver is, I have a slight preference for the Brut Grand. Okay, this is from some dude named Terry uh, Thies, um, which I, I, I apologize, I really don't know who that is. Uh, he's probably some wine critic that I've never heard of, which, no big deal. By the way, if you've been watching the following the Robert Parker thing, interesting, isn't it? And this is New Year's Eve, so there may be more revealed about the whole deal and the Singapore guy and if there's other people involved and, and, and all the rules people are taking. But um, I had already started making my decisions about the rating thing before Robert Parker. But when Robert Parker was like supposedly like relinquishing total control from his newsletter, I was kind of like, well... I guess the the era of wine ratings is over. But then I realized, then I found that it wasn't like total control he was relinquishing. He was just getting investors and he was taking a, a step back, but he's still gonna be reviewing his wines. It's not like he's he just sold off his property and some schmo is gonna start, you know, some start some schmo is gonna start reviewing wines. But anyway. I really like this nose. A lot. And I do get that nuttiness. It's just not as pronounced. Um, I feel I get a little lime out of it. I don't get any mint. Maybe some minerality. And I do feel like I'm a little bit stuffed up a bit, but I can definitely smell the stuff. I can taste it. Um, the nose is the best. I think I like the nose better than the than the palate, but the palate's good. And I, like I said, if you want to impress somebody, like, okay, these are for people that are just gonna like wine, okay? They, they like it, you're gonna taste it, they're gonna they're go, oh, this is good. This is for me. This is, or, or this is, I don't know, maybe I'm, I'm describing it wrong, because maybe your wine geeks and your champagne geeks are gonna like these better. But this appeals to my palate and what I like out of a wine, what I like out of champagne, because it's 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 It feels like it's more balanced and it's not. I don't know. It just it just I just like it. I think it's tastier. But this is good too. I mean, 
it's one of those things where if you put either one of these in front of me, I would be like raving about it. Oh my God, especially, you know, at a party where everyone's having a great time anyway. So wines are automatically going to get five extra points in, in, a, in a rating system. Um, you know, they both would be like, cool. And this, same thing, all three of these would be like, oh my goodness, this is awesome. But I, you know, in this situation, I like this one. Buy it. Buy all three. Um, if you have a chance to buy any of those, highly recommend them. Uh, I think this is my favorite of the lot. Um, and I was debating on which one I was going to do last. So I did not that I was debating which one I was going to like the best, but I was trying to figure out what, you know, in order of what was going to be better. And I almost went with this one because it was a higher retail price, but I said, no, I'm going to go by order of what I paid. It just worked out that way. They're both excellent. Um, I'm probably going to be finishing this off tonight. Anyway, uh, so that's going to do it for today's show. Uh, this is the last show of 2012. I just wanted to say this real quick. Um, I really appreciate everybody who's watched the show over the past year and in the years prior to that. Um, it's been awesome. It's been wonderful. Uh, I've made some new friends. Uh, I've had some great experiences, especially this last month with going out to the Texas wineries. The next, ep next five episodes are going to be awesome. Uh, you're going to see episodes from... In this order, Becker, Messina Hoff, uh, William Chris, I'm sorry, one more time. <laughs> Becker, Messina Hoff, Pertinalis, William Chris, and Dukeman. So the next five weeks, you're going to see some great episodes. Um, I haven't watched them all yet. I haven't done the editing yet. But um, we've got some great backdrops. We've got some great things going on. It's got some wonderful wines. I've bought some of those wines for, for home to, to, to enjoy. I'm not going to re-review them because if I did, I'd still give them good scores or good ratings. Um, but some of the ones I did buy, I, didn't buy, I couldn't buy all of them. I can't afford to buy all of them. But it's awesome. Speaking of that, hit the donate button, send me some ducats, uh, or you know, buy the books. You know, Go to the Amazon store that I have set up or buy the book here. I need to put that in the actual store. You know, buy the camera I'm using. You know, buy the video recorder, uh, the audio audio recorder I'm using. Um, all that good stuff. Um, but value for value, um, I am the really the only self-produced show out there, and uh, I don't rely on other people's contributions. But if you want to send me a, a few dollars, you don't have to send a lot. You know, do it. I mean, I have a little blurb over here, and it's kind of funny about. I think I took that off actually. I think I took the thing off about sending out. Thirteen hundred thirty-seven dollars, but um, send five bucks, send ten bucks. There's a, a five dollar a month subscription, so do that. You know, uh, it ends after a year anyway, so it's not like you're gonna have it go on in, in, in perpetuity. Okay, um, but uh, you know, check out the site, visit visit the links uh, for all these wines, uh, leave comments below, tell your friends about it. I mean huge amount of people watching on TV and a huge, oh my goodness, iFood TV, all of you people on iFood TV, stop by the site and tell me about it. I cannot believe the number of visits, or not visits, the number of views I get off of iFood TV. The one place I didn't think was really going to give me a whole lot of views, and I kind of ignored you guys for so long. And then one day I started looking at my stats, and I'm like, really? I get more views from that than even TiVo. And all of you TiVo people is awesome. The Roku, the five or six Roku people that are watching, pff, props. I love it. Um, iTunes people, the subscriptions keep climbing a little bit at a time. I think um, you know, I'm in double digits, let's put it that way. I'm well into the double digits. I'd like to get the triple digits in a couple months. So uh, let people know about it, you know, just in visiting the website. You know, that's, that's also something that it's great. Uh, I'm trying to put more written content on there, so there's there's a reason to visit the website other than just leaving a comment or clicking a link for one of these wines. Um, Somming A School is going to come back soon. That's a website exclusive. Uh, you're not going to be able to watch this on TiVo or watch it on uh, iFood TV or anything else because it's really meant to be kind of more of a geeky thing. So if you want to get more wine knowledge, and it's going to be higher level than the first set of Psalm School things. I haven't decided if I'm going to complete the Australia thing or not. Because I kind of went, I got halfway into Australia and I stopped. Um, I may just finish that off and then start over. Just so, you know, I don't like having thing, things incomplete. I kind of complain about blogs that don't finish their stuff or don't have a goodbye thing. But other than that, uh, 
Oh, snap. Look at that. How cool is that? Other than that, um, <clears throat> cheers, everybody. Here's to a great 2013, and we'll see everyone again next time.